Hey guys, here is your introduction to the Taylor series um, and the McLaurin series. And the way to start this out is we got to go back and talk about representing a function as a power series, which is what we did last week. So if we want to represent a function as a sort of a generic power series, we basically put it like this, where we have some power of x centered at a, and uh, or the series is centered at a, but this is you know this gets you your powers, and then there's some constant involved potentially uh, for each particular term. So like if you list them out, you know at zero you have c sub zero, so there's just a constant, plus your first constant times x minus a to the first, plus your second constant times x minus a to the second, plus your third constant x minus a to the third. We get another one in there. Uh, your fourth constant x minus a to the fourth dot 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 okay so this is our power series we have a constant plus something x to the first plus something x to the second plus something x to the third and that was basically what we did uh, again last week where we have a polynomial that represents our function um, but that polynomial is really an infinite series and depending on how accurate we needed it to be would determine how many terms we would list so if you remember when we graphed it we would graph like four, five, six terms. We graph the original function just to make sure we did it right. And then for a certain window, those two functions looked virtually identical. Okay, so this is a power series representation for this function. Okay, that's the basics. The next question is, all right, well, that's all well and good, but how are you supposed to figure out these constant terms? Okay, I have no problem with the x's, you know, and if you tell me where to center it, great, I can do all that. But how am I supposed to know? On the one example we did, those constants were always 1. We made it very simple. We said, what if c sub n is always 1? Okay, well, that's real convenient, but it doesn't have to be that way. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is trying to find a way to come up with a formula for our constants. And this is what we do. If, uh, if this is f of x right here, I'd like to know what f of a is. Okay. So if I were to plug in a for all my x's, all these terms, this infinite number of terms, go to 0 except for this first constant. So my first term here, f of a, is my uh, initial constant, c sub 0. All right, so to find c sub 0, I would just have to find f of a. All right, fair enough, fair enough. How about c sub 1, c sub 2, c sub 3, etc.? So we've got to come up with some kind of formula here. So let's, let's take the derivative of this series, which is the derivative of this function, but I can take the derivative of this series single term by single term, because this is, again, is just a polynomial. If I asked you, you know, if I said f of x equals 7 plus 2x squared plus 3x to the ninth, and said take the derivative, you would do, okay, I have derivative of 7, derivative of 2x squared, derivative of 3x to the ninth, no problem. We're going to do the same thing here. The c sub 0, of course, goes to 0 c sub 1 times x minus a, well, that's just c sub 1, right? This is c sub 1 x, the derivative would be c sub 1. a is another constant, so that part goes to 0. c sub 1 x minus a goes to c sub 1. This one, I have to do a power rule. So my power rule is going to be 2 times c2, x minus a to the first, with a chain rule kicker that's just a 1. So I'm not going to even bother writing that. Next, I have... 3c3 x minus a to the second plus 4c4 x minus a to the third etc 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 and that would be my f prime of x well again my goal was to find um, what c sub 1 is so if I find f prime of a I get c sub 1 okay again if I plug in a and all these terms all these infinite terms go to 0 except for that first one and in this case the first one's actually c sub 1 so f prime of a is c sub 1, f of a is c sub 0. I found my first two terms. All right, there's, uh, there's some more to do, so we'll go again. We'll go another time. The good news is once you've done a couple of them, they all kind of, you know, you start to see a little bit of a pattern here. Uh, first term is 0. Second term is 2c2 plus, and here, you know, if you look carefully at your power rule, yeah, it's going to be 2 times 3c3, three, and 2 times 3, of course, is 6. But in order to see the pattern, I'm actually not going to write 6. I'm going to write 3 times 2. 
And you wouldn't know to do that at first. You would just write a six, and, and, and it's fine. It's just you, you might have a hard time seeing the pattern that way. x minus a to the first plus 4 times 3, c4, x minus a to the second, dot, dot, dot. Again, I'm not writing 12. I'm writing 4 times 3. And if I want f double prime of a, I'm going to plug a in. And all these terms go to 0 except for this one, which is 2c2. OK? Uh, well, that's good. That's good. I got a c0, a c1, a c2. I, I can't really see the pattern, though, because these two are just the c terms. And then all of a sudden, I have a 2 here. So I think we should go again. Oops, f triple prime of x. All right, 0 plus 3 times 2c3. 3 times 2c3. Uh, the x minus a goes, uh, gets taken care of. Plus 2 times 4 times 3, or 4 times 3 times 2. Same thing. c4, x minus a to the first, plus dot, 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 dot. And f triple prime of a, of course, is just the 3 times 2c3 term. This term and all the rest of the terms go to 0. And maybe you can see the pattern now, but you know what? Just to be totally sure, we're going to go one more time. Just to be totally sure. One, two, three, four. All right, this part goes to 0. I'm left with just 4 times 3 times 2c4 plus dot, dot, dot. F1234 of A. All, I didn't write any more terms. I probably should have one more term just so you can see it. But you can imagine there's another term here with an x minus A in it. And that's going to go to 0. So really, all you're left with is 4 times 3 times 2, C4. And that takes care of your last, not last term, but the last one I think we need. Because look what we've got. We've got C sub 0, C sub 1, 2, C2, 3 times 2, C3, 4 times 3 times 2, C4. You can almost imagine the next one's going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. And eventually, you see that this is, these are all factorials. OK, these all come from the factorial. Now, what factorial is it? Is it just n? Well, let's see. Let's let's um, let's see what we got here. We have f of a. Oh, let me just summarize it over here. We have here. I'll actually do it on a new sheet here. I'm running out of room here. Okay, so f of a was c sub zero. F prime of a was c sub one. F double prime of a was two c two f triple prime was 3 times 2, c3. And f quadruple prime was 4 times 3 times 2 times c4. OK, so there's the summary of all, of all the ones we came up with. So my zeroth derivative, my original, was just you know c sub 0. My first derivative was c1. My second derivative was 2 factorial c2. Third derivative was 3 factorial c3. My fourth derivative was 4 factorial c4, which means my nth derivative is going to be n factorial c sub n. OK? So again, if you put in 0, you're here. The 0th derivative is your original. 0 factorial is 1, c sub 0. Put in 1. My first derivative is 1 factorial c sub 1. My third third derivative, f triple prime of a, is going to be 3 factorial times c sub 3. This is my relationship. Okay. So if you go back to the original here, remember, we were trying to come up with a way to solve for c sub n. Well, we did it. We've got c sub n right here. So c sub n equals fn of a over n factorial. And that we can substitute in. If we substitute that in, we get f of x equals the series from 0 to infinity of instead of, instead of c sub n, I'm going to put in this f to the, uh, the um, nth derivative of f at a um, all over n factorial times x minus a to the n. OK, so all I did was I replaced c sub n with uh, the nth derivative of f at a divided by n factorial, which is the formula we found from the pattern. And this is what we call a Taylor series centered at a. OK, remember when we, we talked about a power series centered at a. This is a power series. But when you write it in this form where the 
the constant term is written in the, with this formula, we call it a Taylor series. And in more special case of this, if I do the exact same thing, but center it at zero, like purposefully put it, uh, put the center at zero, the series starts to look like this instead, right? Instead of x minus a, I'm just writing x to the n. And instead of f to the n, uh, the nth derivative of f at a, I put f to the nth derivative uh, of zero. This has a special name too, and this is called the Maclaurin series. The Maclaurin series is simply, in other words, it's a Taylor series centered at zero. That's what makes the Maclaurin series special. So you can see they basically are identical. Okay, it's just you're, auto, you're already putting in the zero. And this is the foundation of Taylor series and Maclaurin series. In the next videos, I'll do specific Maclaurin series that we need to be able to do. And I'll do more videos of examples of how these are used and applied and manipulated um, in the ways that you need to be able to do them. Okay, so there's the foundation. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will uh, talk to you guys later. See ya.